Hey everybody, I have been getting a ton of, um, I guess negative input on Reddit and Twitter and people asking what I would consider frequently asked questions about where to start, what the values may be, what, um, you know, how to send out for grading, things of that. <clears throat> so I kind of wanted to address that tonight just real quick. Um, one of the main things I see is I want to get back into collecting. What should I start with? Well, easy answer. Go to Walmart, see what's on the shelf. Go to Target, go to wherever you can buy retail and buy something just give it a shot see what you like um <clears throat> series one 2020 didn't really do much for me so i waited until new heritage came out and i bought heritage and then i did pretty well with that um buy singles buy what you actually enjoy owning I'm not a massive basketball player fan, but, and I especially don't like Duke, but a Zion 9.5 is going to yield me some money. I like money because it affords me stupid things like this because I love Scherzer. All right. So. Buy what you guys want. I mean, PC stuff. Um, do research. Don't ask other people to do your research for you. Right? It's hard. It's a long game. You know? Um, a lot of it's going to come down to... Honestly, years of collecting expertise... And I think Gary V put it a good way. It's like the only way to get started, 50 hours. Just put in 50 hours of work. I know it's tough. And I know there's better ways you could probably spend your time. But don't ask other people to do your labor for you. Um, second uh, frequently asked thing I see is... I just inherited a 1988 to 1995 collection of 10,000 cards. What should I look for? Well, the flat, blunt, honest truth about all of that is you probably don't have any value in there. Uh, what are the print runs? No one knows because Top says they made so much they don't even know. Um, they were also competing against Fleer and Donruss and everyone else on the planet. So they weren't regulated. Now that, don't take my word on this, but I've seen it published that the agreement between Tops and Major League Baseball has a stipulation where they do not overproduce cards I don't know if there's an actual defined number on what production runs are supposed to be but I think neither one of them wants to run into the same problem that they had you know 25 years ago number three uh, who should I grade with how do I look for um, what to send out for grading. The cheapest, easiest way to figure out whether or not your card is worth sending out for grading is go buy a couple of these. Um, these are for coin collecting. Or at least that's how my wife and I got our hands on them. 
Um, they make different ones. They make ones with lights. They actually make special ones for um, for cards. Uh, so we'll just, for example, we'll look at this one. I don't know if it'll come through on the camera. In fact, I really, really doubt it will. But the main thing you're going to look for, the main things that get jacked up in baseball, especially in like base stuff, base cardboard, are going to be the corners and the edges, okay? So that's what, what you want to look at, okay? So do that front and back. And a lot of times you can just see it. You can tell. All right? So if you see whiting or if you see edge damage or if you see whatever you might see, they're going to, whoever's grading that card is going to see twice as much as you. So, for example, um, this was a crushing blow for me. I took a beat down on that card. I thought that card was perfect. You know what these are numbered to? These are numbered to 50. I got 23. That's a Pete Alonzo gold out of the original top scrum because in the chrome update it chops off his at his knee but i was like that card's perfect there's nothing wrong with it well look at the centering you know how you measure centering you get a ruler out guys come on you got a ruler if you don't have a ruler go to the dollar store if you don't have a jeweler's eye or whatever they call it Go to Hobby Lobby. Go to wherever is selling hobby supplies. You don't have to be a genius. But what I did is I sent these out because I had no idea. And I was like, look, I just pulled this straight from a pack. I was at the blowout store when I pulled this thing. That was back in, I think, January. Um, one thing I didn't do is clean the surface before I sent it out. Another thing to look into. Guys, do your own research. That's what it comes down to. Okay? Um, let's see. What's next on the uh, FAQs? Um, how much should I value this card at? It's a 1 out of 5. Uh, E.g. nondescript player. Right? Um, the best way to value a card like that like um <laughs> shit hold on what did i have here uh let's just say for some reason you pull like a near meyer out of 10 how are you gonna value that well look at another guy that's similar that's not in the top 10 of people's collections and just assume that they're kind of not that valuable, unfortunately. Just because a card has a low numbering and good stats, let's even say it's a PSA 10. Um, that means nothing. If it's not a collectible player, it's not worth much, unfortunately. Which sucks because a lot of our hits right happen to be you know the undesirable players which is a bummer but that's the art of the rip right you know you gotta break the box to see what you got and sometimes you hit the home run and sometimes you get your nose pushed in the sand <laughs> And it sucks, and that's what it is. And you gotta move on and move past it and find someone who's collecting that because there are people out there that are collecting it. Your best way to find out value is to list it low on eBay. Um, 
leave it on there for as long as you can. If you are willing to pay the extra, just do a buy it now or best offer. Outside of that, there's not a good way to gauge value because people aren't selling them or they're keeping them. So, um, the next one, what's going to be collectible in the future? That is an impossible question to answer. Um, just look at what I've got right here in front of you. Start all the way to the left. Those are the Mesa brothers, right? It's a black atomic refractor. That's a pop one. Does anyone have any idea if these kids are going to do anything? No. Do I have any idea? No. But two, three years down the road, maybe. Now, does Eloy Jimenez go off and do something? I think that's a pop one, too. On the green wave refractor. I was disappointed again. I didn't clean the surface, and apparently they grade as presented. So I think that might go back to PSA. Um, Pete Alonzo, older rookie. Who knows? Um, right behind that. Kyle Stowers. I mean, he belongs to one of the shittiest organizations in baseball that I grew up. A massive fan of when I was a kid. But are the Orioles going to bring him up right? I have no idea. I mean, I know that Max Scherzer is what Max Scherzer is, right? A perennial Cy Young contender. His cards aren't worth shit. I think I paid like $9 plus shipping or $12 plus shipping for a chrome sapphire. So my point is, no one can foretell what's going to happen tomorrow or 10 years from down the road, right? Collect what you like. Be honest about what you like. Be honest about your intentions, okay? Because the more honest you are with people, and you can't fake that kind of stuff. People will catch on. I can catch a guy and say, I'm not sure that you're a liar. I just, something doesn't feel right, you know? And especially you young guys, if something feels weird, trust your instincts, you know? Um, one of the first trades I did on Reddit actually was with a younger guy. And he's like, hey, you know, I got to ask my mom if this is okay. And I'm like, hey, you know what? I tell you what. Ask your mom if it's cool. We're not dealing in high dollar cards. It was, I think, a $10 deal or something like that. And I was like, I will mail them to you first. You tell me if your mom's okay with the trade once you get the cards. If not, throw them in an envelope, send them back to me, or don't. But if I lost 10 bucks, no big deal. You know, sometimes to a 12, 13, 14, 15, yeah, shit. I know 18 year old people that don't want to lose 10, 15 bucks. And I understand that. So be honest with your trades. Be honest with your sales. Um, you know, I try to buy stuff that I think will grade well. And I think I'd like to sell people stuff that will grade well. Some people are happy with PSA, PSA 8 stuff. Some people are happy with 9s. I'm not. I. I want nine and a half and tens and you can tell the difference on that Alonzo to that Jimenez, that silver label versus that gold makes me want to jump out my window, <laughs> but it's something I'll get over. Right. And we've all learned something from that. There's a lot of resources out there too, guys. Um, and gals, you know, we got a lot of resources. You just got to learn how to search for them. Um, a lot of weird stuff coming up. 
I think. I think it's going to be a weird time for the market. I don't know how Tops is going to continue just rolling out releases when sales are down, at least in the secondary. Because usually the secondary market's going to indicate how the initial sales is going to go. So we'll see how all that pans out over the next couple months. I know a lot of you guys have been getting Gypsy Queen stuff. and I love watching it. I wish I could participate. But... You know, wife and I are staying at home. We're not um, trying to touch any more than we have to. Um, so bottom line, if you guys have any questions, comments, anything like that, feel free to post it up. Um, I think next video is going to be in like two days because I got some cool stuff coming in. And my brother's got a pretty cool video that he's got ready to roll out. Um so maybe we'll do that one on like Tuesday night, maybe tomorrow night. We'll see. Uh, till then, if you guys have any more questions or anything, I'm happy to address them. All right. Until next time. Adios.